gave them the water of wisdom to drink, and it made them strong, and them, and in them, and will not be, and they will not be moved, and he will raise them up forever. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather together on this third day of the octave of Easter, Easter Tuesday, let's pause calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned through my faults. Let's try that again. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned through my, and my thoughts, through my, thoughts, through and my, my words, words, words and, and what, what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through, through my, my fault, fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have bestowed on us paschal remedies, endow your people with heavenly gifts, so that, possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments, and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she bent over into the tomb 
and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener, and said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to, my, to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. As I mentioned yesterday, during this octave of Easter, we hear of the post-resurrection accounts of Jesus. We know that it's not extensive as to where um, we'll hear on Sunday, Divine Mercy Sunday, at the end of John's Gospel, that Jesus appeared many more times, but that these specifics were given so we might come to believe. And two things in which I wish to note within this Gospel is, first, oftentimes when our risen Lord appears to his disciples and his apostles, they don't recognize him. <laughs> Now, this might seem very strange, because Mary Magdalene was one of the three that stood at the foot of the cross. So this is Easter Sunday, when he appears, and just three days earlier, on Good Friday, she was standing right there underneath the foot of the cross. So why is it that she isn't recognizing him? Perhaps because he's in his full glory? Perhaps because of the grief, or the fear, or the uncertainty has overwhelmed her, and she just, she hasn't put it all together? Arguably, probably all of us would have a difficult time putting together the resurrection as well, at least um, in reality, hopefully theologically we understand it now, but probably in reality as well. So that's not, that's not too unusual because even Peter or the apostles when they're fishing and whatnot don't originally recognize the Lord. But what does Jesus do in order to have them recognize him? He calls them by name. So in this case he says Mary, and by calling her by name she recognizes him. And then it seems like there's a discourse here. He tells Mary to stop holding on. And he's not disappointed that in, in Mary or anything like that. But what Mary's doing is he's, she's holding on to the relationship in which she had with him for the past three years. So Jesus was a very dear friend to Mary. Again, one of his three closest beloved. Um, so you have Mary, obviously, his mother. Mary Magdalene, the foot of the cross. John the Apostle, the foot of the cross. Then we also hear that he very much loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Who he raped, whom he raised from the dead. So she longed for that earthly relationship, that relationship with Jesus as human. But what Jesus wanted to do is to bring her along even further, bring her into a deeper relationship, that same relationship in which you and I are also called to have with him. It was hard for me to fully imagine how being with Jesus for three years isn't better than what we necessarily have now. But yet my relationship with Jesus, and hopefully all of our relationship with Jesus, is also a relationship with him within our heart, spiritually. So when we were baptized, our soul was changed, we began to share in the divinity of Christ. Mary Magdalene, at least during Jesus' earthly years, didn't share in that, nor did any of the apostles. It wasn't until his death and his resurrection and his ascension into heaven that they could share in that. And then also we too, we received the Eucharist, his body and blood, his soul and divinity. But yet he had to ascend to the Father before that could occur. So, I often say we live within resurrection times, but the ascension is still pointing towards something that will come. And on Ascension Sunday, we'll talk about that, what the ascension means for each one of us and the reality of that. But in this, Jesus is telling us not to hold on to purely human things. So, and if you think about that, that could be good things or that could be bad things. Maybe that's that favorite sin in which you like to hold on to that we keep falling back into. Or maybe it's not something that's sinful at all. Maybe it's something um, just... Just, just our wealth, which isn't in and of itself sinful, or a possession which we have. Or, you know, I even think about people within my life. So my grandmother is 90 years old. She's, she's in a nursing home. She's not very well. And yet, I don't want her to die. But yet, maybe, maybe it's time for her to go so that she can be with God forever in heaven. Those are the things which Jesus is telling us not to hold on to. And again, they're not bad things, but in order for them to be the fullness of what they're called to be, we're called to let them go. 
My friends in Christ, as we continue on within this Easter season, let us ask God to help us see the things that are beyond, the things that are above, most of all to long for that relationship with him, that relationship in which we have a foretaste of now here on earth, and ultimately that we will share forever in heaven. St. Mary Magdalene, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplication of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the whole world, that they may truly know the peace given by Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take away from them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. A special way we pray for all those who are sick and suffering in any way, those members of our parish, those members of each one of our families. To the, for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this parish community of Corpus Christi, that we may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of the Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for all those whom have died, especially the repose of the soul of Agnes Foxworthy, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subjected to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Of Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but obtain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, 
overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To their far most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Michael our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope and health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memories we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and in all things we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them the forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and to approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. 
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. If you have risen with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, mind the things that are above. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Hear us, Almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the reward of eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Reminder that the remainder of the week we will continue to have Mass live streamed, or at least Monday through, or, today, or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 8 a.m., sorry, at 9 a.m., and then later it will be on the website. This upcoming weekend, there will be two opportunities to view the Divine Mercy Mass won't be live streamed on Saturday, which is the vigil for um, Divine Mercy Sunday at 2 p.m. Then there'll be another one at 2 p.m. on, so I guess Saturday is the vigil, Sunday is the, is the day of. So they're both at 2 p.m. Sorry, lots of numbers going through my head right now. Also, we continue to have adoration today until 6 o'clock, and each day this week from 5 until 6 um, is, is, is done in the past. Also, we, um, we continue to offer, obviously, have Mass intentions for each of the Masses. Just because the parish office um, is closed to people coming in doesn't mean that you cannot call up or send an email to Laney, and she would absolutely be able to get your Mass intentions scheduled. So remember, Mass is the greatest, the most efficacious prayer for people, so I encourage you to do so for loved ones, um, those who have died, or even those who are living um, within your family now. pray that you have a very blessed Easter Tuesday. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnities and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. <laughs> May he who restored you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. <laughs> Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast Come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And through the intercession of Mary Magdalene and Mary, the Queen of all saints, may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.